Hello and welcome to 360 Sports. I am Emmanuel Fashimi. We've got a lot of stories making the heavyweights and uh, making the runs in the world of sport for you. These are lovely money and uh, you can see smiles on my face. Why am I smiling? You'll get to know very, very, very soon because uh, it's actually a wonderful news for Nigerian and for one particular athlete out there who have been waiting for to actually uh, get it all cleared. And straight up, uh, we'll be beginning from uh, athletics that is uh, talking about Toby Amuson, who has been giving the nod, the go ahead to participate at the upcoming World Athletic Championship. This championship will be kickstarting, to, will be starting tomorrow, and we know what happened uh, some f weeks back. Right now, that Toby Amuson was suspended, provisionally suspension by the Athletics Integrity Unit uh, for um, doping, missing uh, uh, doping uh, violation, as in missing the test three good times and she came out to say she is uh, a clear athlete she had didn't do anything wrong and you know uh, when you are a superstar a lot of engagement and we know she just got uh, her masters uh, uh, in sports management so a lot of uh, uh, activities in her hands and she came out to say she is a clean athlete uh, she was suspended for weeks. We've been waiting for this. And finally, just Thursday, uh, that ban was lifted by the Athletics Integrity Unit right there uh, in Monaco, where uh, the, the, the verdict was actually, pr the pronouncement was uh, made. And for Toby Amazon, she will be burning the tracks in Budapest. She will be pesting on that track in Budapest, Hungary, where uh, Hungary is hungry to actually see uh, Toby and Muson. I have a gentleman on the show uh, this morning, Noel Samson. Uh, is actually a good news for Toby and Muson and for Nigerian, myself, and every other person out there because we actually prayed for this time to come. But eventually, she has been cleared to participate in the World Athletics Championship that will be starting uh, on um, tomorrow. Yeah, we, we really thank God. We, we, uh, it's, been really, uh, it's been a tough journey so far for Toby Amazon since when they said that uh, she, she has to go undergo the test of suspension. Because since last week, we've been hearing rumors that um, she has been cleared, but there was no specific uh, pronouncement it was not, it was not about cleared. that. Exactly. So, it was, so it's, it's really a good thing that she has been cleared because we shouldn't lie, we shouldn't, lie, we shouldn't uh, deceive ourselves. She is the one all Nigerians are hopeful. As in putting their hope on that, okay, next, uh, when the competition starts tomorrow, she's got to deliver at least a good medal to, uh, for, Niger for Nigeria. So it's a very good thing. We are happy and that she's been cleared. And it's a lesson for the athlete also today. She does, some of them, they just eat things they don't really, they're not supposed to eat. Not because no, her own is eat. not even by eating. Uh, she was supposed to undergo a test. They said she missed three good times three times she was not there maybe when the doctors came uh, as in uh, her samples was not sent three times yeah, I know. as I was, of the when I know. It was I, was trying, I was trying to just divert. okay uh, taking in uh, if you say in uh, if you want to look it at that way uh, she did, didn't actually do anything yeah no they wrong. might they might think she took something it's just like uh, that is why yeah, she is running just like, okay, from, you, uh, that is why she is scared to be uh, to be tested but it's, now uh thank god uh the the ban has been lifted now let's look at toby chances uh at the uh, world athletics championship uh starting a very just uh tomorrow, let's say less than, uh, less than 24 hours everything will be hostility will be starting in budapest now after the because this is a lot of distraction the time toby amazon was supposed to be preparing mastering uh, the track um jumping the hurdles at least she and her coach will be working. That was the time this whole issue was going on. Uh, do you think it's going to affect her chances of actually defending this title? No, I don't. Yeah, I don't think it's going to affect her chances because if she knows she was, she has not taken anything that is bad. Because all she knows that she's being, she's, uh, she's, she's okay for her to be cleared. I don't think she's going to have an issue for her because I think even though she's not doing it on on the track where she's supposed to do my training, she and her coach, at least they can have a private section where she can't be exercising probably at home doing one or two exercises to make sure she's, she's in form. So I don't think it's going to really affect her. But now that she's been cleared, I think it's going to be a form of um, excitement for her, for her to just move, to do more. So I don't think it's going to affect her. 
okay, you don't think it's going to affect her. The likes of uh, Ruth Soro, I say Brume, a lot of them with favor of Philly herself will be there. Uh, Chukwe Bukane Kwechi in short put, we have Unyekwere in the discourse, uh, and then we have all that uh, athletes who will be uh, representing Nigeria when hostility starts uh, uh, on, on Saturday. Now, uh, from the look of things, what, because Toby Amuson is the biggest the star. Toby Amuson and Ese Brume, these are the two biggest. It's not that other athletes that are going are not big. The likes of Chukwebuka and Nekwechi in short put, we're also looking at that area to get something, to get a medal. Even in the discourse uh, for the ladies, Onyekwere and Co. Uh, will also be participating in that aspect. Now, if we look at it side by side, all of the athletes that we are going with, um, how many, okay, from your own point of view, how many medals do you think uh, Nigeria will come back with? We can't, uh, I can't really place the number of medals we can because uh, we will take, we will bring home because other people going there are not going, to, are not going there to sell granite or to sell Gary. They are going there also to, uh, they don't for, sell serious, Gary <laughs> for serious competition. And if we were to look at, you know, based on, uh, we like call the facilities, level of preparedness and support from government i think all the countries especially those in europe they have much more advantage more than us in that aspect so i don't think uh probably uh, let me just say assume we have 20 athletes i'm just saying assuming we have 20 we athletes. have uh, in total 11 okay. more than 11. yeah let's say like that's what i'm saying let's i'm giving the round uh, a, a total figure like if you have 20 athletes okay assuming as if yes, we have uh, 20 athletes uh, going there. us uh, there in hungary i think and in budapest hungary i think so be something, uh, let me use the word sacrosanct, she's going to give us a medal. Sure. Okay. Um, so I, I'm expecting probably 10. Okay. 10 so medals. If, if there are 11, let me say 6. Okay, six medals from, but uh, I'm, I'm very sure myself that uh, we are going to get a lot of medals from all of the uh, uh, events that will be participating in most socially in the athletics in the field uh, and then track i'm expecting a lot to come from uh, from that area good one for toby amuson and good news for nigerians and good news for toby amuson she has actually come out to say she's excited and for this band that has been lifted is a morale booster for toby amuson to actually go there and defend her title because these are a lot of distractions from the aiu they never wanted her to defend this title i can say it because from their body language, you know, these are uh, part of uh, making an athlete to fail. When you know that you are going to clear her while taking the uh, issue for so, so, so long. It's just a pathetic one. But good news uh, for her and for Nigerians that she has been finally cleared. And I'm getting some feelers uh, into that report that uh, the AIU wants to return back to CAS. That is the uh, Court of Arbitration for Sport to uh, challenge. I, I don't know why they are doing all of this. Now, from your own, uh, from your own perspective, do you think uh, the AIU is doing this deliberately? Yeah, I think so, because I don't really know what she are. Let me say, probably, she's a black woman, if I'm allowed to say. She's a from black Ogun woman. From Ogun State. From Ogun State, doing ex exceiling, um, breaking records, creating records. So what do you expect? They want, they will be like, okay, let's look for how to bring her down. So she should be very careful. That's what I want. She should be very careful. No, she should just be very careful. So I think these are part of trying to just bring, I know we're supposed to face some of those challenges. You can see, you can see most of all these are female, um, um, I am sorry, black athletes. Who, if you see them extend, they try to just try to do. They are always uh, trying after to just, them. Yeah, try going, to bring them just down. Just to look for one thing or the other to nail them. And okay. the issue is that when it comes to the to the other counterparts, it's not, it's not like it's that. It's always uh, very, uh, let me say, smooth with their, okay. Uh, let's see how it goes. Uh, AIU, please leave our Toby Amazon alone because we love her. Nigerian loves her. Africans love her. We want her to keep breaking records and setting records. Good one for Toby Amazon. If you go to CAS, I don't know what you are going there to do. AIU, uh, enough is enough. Uh, still talking about athletics, let's go to the next story. And now we're going to talk about one man uh, who has been heading that uh, uh, that body for uh, for quite some time. And now he has been re-elected. The third time, that is Sebastian Cole, has been elected as the World Athletics uh, uh, Body 
president for the third time uh, running and this man has been there first second third and we have uh, other persons who will be supporting uh, supporting him uh, the likes of Raul Chapado Adile Sumarwala and Jackson Tuwe uh, were elected as a vice president alongside Colombia Zimena Restepru now these persons will be supporting Sebastian Co Sebastian Co the third term first second third term uh, do you think uh, he has done enough to win the third uh, third time you actually from what i i read he was he, he, he came on post so to show he's been really doing a very great job and he's a former british uh, olympian also too so he's yes a, of course so he's doing a, actually a great job if he's not doing a great job i don't think um he will want they will, they will want him to be there and i think this is his last turn up so far so he's done the first second third he has he has probably done incredible things which they think okay this guy is good enough let him just do continue and consolidate in exactly. some of his so, uh, achievements i think if he has not done well you have other opponents coming up <laughs> i know Oh, who are going to who are going to challenge well, he, he won the election on opposed so on opposed to okay. show how he to show how fantastic he has been and they probably like what he's been doing so i think he has been a great job i just pray the many channel you're going to use you should just improve more on some other lapses the athletic federation has okay uh he should actually uh consolidate on some of his achievements and then improve on them and then also uh bring in some ideas to see how uh that body can actually uh do well the same body we are responsible for toby amazon's band but good news for toby amazon and also good news for sebastian cole who has been re-elected for the third time to uh, man that uh, that body a good one for for this man he's actually a great man he has done a lot when it comes to athletics in the world he's doing everything he can to actually stamp out doping in the world of athletics and doping is not something that should be found in our sports it's not something that athletes should indulge in or any other sportsman out there okay let's leave that story and come back to africa but we will be stopping over in cameroon where the african volleyball championship is uh, going on nigeria after starting very well they defeated mali 3-0 the same score line was what the host cameroon using trashing uh nigeria cameroon trashed nigeria in their second game and it happened in straight set uh quickly uh, before we have uh, the coach speaking we have uh, the coach speaking but before uh, the coach uh, noel we started very well against mali and our second game against the cameroonians though they are the host we play against uh, the seventh player which is the fans you know in, in volleyball we have six players <laughs> on the court so it's not 11 players now the seventh player is the fans but uh, so far so good the get gave good, a good account of themselves uh though it was not enough we lost we lost three zero first second quarter in the third quarter we were blue away <laughs> <laughs> i love the way you use the word blue away. so it's um it's something uh when i saw the news this morning i was quite not quite um impressed with that because we we won a, we had a good game against uh, mali. mali now against the host nation as you said the seventh player which is, which are the fans it's so i probably i, I thought probably girls they might look they, they might have lost focus probably maybe the the the, the praises from the first match against my okay yeah let us we can do it. it again so i think they lost focus and that probably that's why they lost the game against mali i'm sorry against the cameron, cameron. they should know probably fans okay well should will be part of it probably bring them but they should be as a, as a professionals in the field they shouldn't probably let the the fans win get to them it might be part of the reasons why they lost because i didn't watch the game so they might different um um block of things that, that made them to lose psychologically so, okay let's take a listen to the coach uh from uh skin speaking right from cameroon let's take a listen to uh, the coach that is the person of samuel ajayi uh who is doing a fantastic job with this side but at the end uh he actually uh, said some things he gave kudos thumbs up to his players despite that loss let's take a listen okay before the video comes up in the first quarter uh nigeria lost uh, 25 uh, 17 and then in the second quarter 25 13 and then in the third quarter it was 25 to 18 and that is uh, how it all pans down the victory that score actually condemned nigeria 
to their first uh, uh, defeat, which is uh, which is not uh, a good one. So uh, first quarter 25-17. Second quarter, 25-13, and then third quarter, 25-18. So the first quarter was 25? 25, um, 25 uh, 13, uh, 13, the first quarter, right? Yeah. The game, is, it was actually um, uh, not quite... Uh, the first, it was not quite... Um, the first quarter was 25-17. 17, oh, wow. So close. Yeah, so close. Then the second was... Uh, second quarter, 25-13. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't close enough. <laughs> but it seems the second quarter was 25-18. It seems they got... Uh, they got they tried to redeem the server the second and the third quarter, but it's far gone already. You lost the first one, you lost the second one, then the third one, there's nothing you can do. Okay, so, there's nothing you can do. I don't know if we have that video ready uh, so that we'll take a listen to Samuel Ajayi, the, the coach of the side. Okay, uh, let's have it. If we have it, let's, let's, let's listen to Coach uh, Ajayi. Um, to perform of my place, I'm so happy with them today. With the way they take the Camerina, they didn't give the Camerina too much respect. Though the Cameroon, they have more exposure than my than the team, but the uh, the, the team so the depth in them that uh, they have what it takes to become the world champions, to become the African champion with the camp performance they put up against Cameroon today. We are not beaten by Cameroon. It's just quite unfortunate that uh, we lost to the better team. I didn't expect anything less than to have the three point at stake against Bolivia. We are not going to take it lightly. We are not going to underrate them because there are a lot of surprises in this uh, tournament. We will go all out the way we go all out against Cameroon today. Okay, that is the coach speaking right there, Samuel Ajaye, who was actually uh, saying they, they lost the game, but the players did all they can to actually see if they win. And later on, they will be taking on uh, Burundi in their third uh, game. What are your expectations for yeah, that game? They, will, they, learned, they, will, they should have learned from their mistakes, uh, according to what the coach said, they will learn from their mistakes and they should, they should transfer aggression. On to the, to the breeding players. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they should transfer aggressions on the breeding players, but sometimes it doesn't work that way when you want to take vengeance on another team. But all they need to do is Veg to go all out there and then play against the, the Burundians and get all the three points at stake and then uh, get everything back on track. I believe these uh, lads can actually uh, do it. Okay, let's leave uh, Cameroon and head straight back to Europe. Now we're going to talk some football matters, but off the pitch this time around, it is the PFA Awards uh, where Manchester City players actually dominated the nominees for those uh, awards. Let's have the list quickly before Noel Samson will react to it. We have the list of the nominees. We have Ellie Haaland of Manchester City. We have Kevin Dribunin of Manchester City. We have John Stones, a man who was converted from defence to a midfielder. Then we have uh, from Manchester City also, we have Martin Odegaard of Arsenal, Bukayo Saka, and then Harry Kane, who is now a Bayern Munich player, but they are representing him from Tottenham. Now, look at the list. No Man U, no Chelsea. What do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> but Manchester City, at least they have three. Out of these three names, one of them will actually win this yeah, award. Yeah, I'm actually thinking either Ellie Haaland or Calvin De Bram should be the one uh, clicking this award. That is my, for my own. Because um, um, Haaland being his first season in the Premier League, the highest goal scorer for the season. Um, the brain has been consistent in performance, giving assists and scoring goals. So I think the goal, should, uh, the, the award should go to the Eddie Haaland or Kevin De Bruyne. Stones is out of it. I'm not seeing Stones as a winner. Stones was very fantastic for Man City so, at that point. Yeah, yeah, I thought he has. That's why I say to me, he's out of it to him. To me, instead of putting on Stones, why not Martin Odegaard? To me, mm, yeah, he, he performed really, but he said that Bukayo Saka. I don't think to me. I don't think we uh, we have to have John Stones or Martin Odegaard at the uh, at the nomination here. Is that you have Busa, uh, Bukayo Saka and Harry Kane, which is I'm, I'm really I'm really I'm com I'm comfortable with those with the other with the with, the, with Harry Kane and uh, Bukayo Saka, but Martin Odegaard and uh, John Stones. No, I'm not comfortable with that. Okay, you are not comfortable with that. Let's see how it ends at the end of the day. At least for me, either Bukayo Saka or Eli Haaland should be scooping this award, and then the third on my own wish list is Kevin De Bruyne. Oh, okay, that is how it is. Manchester City actually dominating that list. Okay, well, quickly, let's go over to today's fixtures. We have some fixtures that will be coming up uh, in the leagues today from the EPL, La Liga, and then the French uh, Ligue 1. Let's have the fixtures. But for the EPL game, 
Nottingham Forest against Sheffield United. Then in La Liga, we have Mallorca against Villarreal. We have Valencia taking on Las Palmas. And then in the German Bundesliga, we have well, Werder Bremen against Bayern Munchen. And then we have Mets, that is in the link on, against uh, Marseille. Let's start from Nottingham Forest against uh, Sheffield United. And Steve Cooper, the coach of Nottingham Forest, has said he is not going to risk Taiwo Aoni. <laughs> yeah. Because I, though he has an injury against uh, before that game against Arsenal in the uh, season opener, uh, he had an injury. But despite that, he came on, he played, and that day was his birthday. That day, his wife delivered. He actually gave a gift mm. to his new son, and on his birthday, scoring a goal. But now against Sheffield United, a team that just got promoted to the league, he has said. He's not going to risk style what we need. Yeah. So what are the chances of Nottingham Forest against uh, Sheffield United? I think they, uh, they will learn from their mistake they played against uh, Arsenal because, you know, Arsenal really dominated. The, the first half of the match, Arsenal really dominated them a lot before they, they brought in Awuni and things will be changed for them. So I think they should have, they have they're going to have another... You have, I think Dennis is still in the team. Emmanuel Dennis is still in the team, so they can use him also to uh, play. He's an, he is, I don't think he even have a chance in playing in that team. But he's a fantastic player also, too. I don't know why they just... I use Steve to... Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think they should learn from the mistake from Arsenal. And Sheffield United, they just got uh, promoted to the Premier League, so their blood will be hot, so they want to show themselves. But I think him not risking him, I'm sorry, uh, Taiwa Wode is the best because the season is just starting. This is the second match. You can see now um, the brain is almost is, is gone is going is, is gone from Manchester City for a long time. Look at Timba, the apps players are just signed for a very long time. So it's better you just Keep him so that when he's recovered fully, uh, uh, he can bounce back to the team. Okay, let's quickly talk about uh, Veda Bremer against Bayern Munich. Now we'll be looking at one man, Harry Kane. Yeah, Harry Kane is going to be. Uh, he played. They played last week. They lost three zero. Yes, against, he, uh, though, he came in as a sub. Yeah. that was his first game. So and it was a cup, uh, a DFB Pokal Super Cup uh, 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 final. So it's going to be transfer of aggression. Okay. <laughs> so uh, Tom, uh, Tom, the, uh, the coach Thomas uh, took out is going to know is is it's not going to take likely with Real Bremen because it's going to uh, we lost 3-0 last week. I uh, know we're going to transfer aggression. And Kane is going to be his first uh, league match so far. He's going to he's going to. I trust Kane is a fantastic player. He's going to perform well today. Okay, he's going to perform well. Okay, quickly before we go on the show, let's take this transfer news. It concerns a Nigerian, a very young man who left Denmark right now and has found himself in England, though he's on loan, and he, was, he will be playing in the championship with uh, uh, Reading FC, talking about uh, Paul Mokairo, who left Copenhagen in Denmark to join uh, Reading FC on loan. And this man is actually a fantastic player. Uh, what are his chances playing for Reading, quickly? Him, uh, Reading, for Reading, loaning him from, uh, from Denmark, they've, they've seen the qualities he possesses and see how fantastic he is. So I just think he does utilize the opportunity and get himself um, um, a first, a first team starter in the team who knows he might be retained by the team and knows a bigger team is going to buy him. So I think him coming to England is a very good one for him. And him playing at the championship is going to play a lot of matches. Okay, him coming to the championship, he's going to actually play a lot of matches. That is where we'll leave it on the show 360 Sports this morning. Um, Noah Samsi, thanks for doing justice to uh, the stories we have. The pleasure and, is mine. All right, uh, that is it on the show. I am Emmanuel Fashimi. Thanks for watching.